These are pretty recent porcelain, even though they look old. Look how white and unused and uneven. Let's see what's in here. Paper lantern, but that's not old. Old paper lanterns can do pretty well. Ah, this is some sort of a high fashion hat. I like that color. How much is that? Somebody used it on Amtrak. Cute little Barbie case, the round hat box style. $20 is a pretty fair price in that condition. $10 on the hat. What do you think? I think I might like the condition of this thing better. $10. Let's see what this looks like underneath. I'm thinking 1970s. Made in Peru, Indiana. Wow, I have a friend who grew up in Peru, Indiana. That's random. The old air popper. He yeah. seems to have an obsession for those just like vacuum cleaners. A little bit of costume jewelry. I don't see anything old. Everything else seems to be sort of leftovers and household stuff. Around here you need a parking lot that is delicious and nutritious. It smells like good barbecue going here. Oh yeah, an old Buffont hair dryer. The spelling is wrong. Yeah, that's wild strawberry blank and that's from Japan and that's a a big ruse. That's when they were starting to take over the industry, yeah. Early 80s golf humor. These probably would sell to the right customer. All right, this place usually has a whole bunch of stuff just sort of spread out on tables and in boxes. And there's old stuff and there's new stuff and I found some fun stuff here before. Those are out of the 50s. Those are okay. It's not a shaker, it's a figure. Well, that's cute. You want that? Sure, I bet these are cheap. I mean, I'd be surprised if they weren't. Thank you. And uh, I saw something over here. Oh, the Conestoga, Conestoga wagon lamps keep catching my eye, and that's only $10. I'm going to Oregon where they sell because of the Oregon Trail, but this one's pretty beaten. These are a very low quality knockoff, missing the fishing pole as well, but this is an Asian knockoff of Yadro from Spain. You can just tell how indefinite the figures are. They're just sort of copying the general colors. Not really well designed. Oh yes, the glass ones. That one's really been cooked in a lot. Yes, that was done in the Second World War era, I believe. The Jim Beam's pin bottle, that one's one that actually sells. Oh, there's a whole series of those red wear shot glasses from Japan from about 1950. It's not a bad price. That's about what I pay for shot glasses. Well, yeah, it's got a little chip. I usually only buy them if I can find more of the set. Three-piece chicken dinner, no cholesterol. Oh, delicious. Yes, with glue. It's a joke. It's from Branson. It's humor. I'm going to pass on that, I think. But I do see some things down here I like. So this is pretty cute. Made in Taiwan. Uh, we'll see how we do. <laughs> These folks are here every year and they usually have some fun stuff. Let's see what this fish is. This looks like it's vintage. What do you want that? Because it'll go to Florida and it'll sell and it's only $10 and it's from the late 50s, early 60s. I think it's Lane of California. When you're on a trip in a smallish car and space is dear, you have to justify your purchases. <laughs> Moon and stars in the orange. Yeah, $7 is about right for that little piece though, I think. Yeah. The ship piece here would have had a lamp in it originally. More iris and herringbone. You sure see that here. Ponies. This is cute with the ladies' kerchiefs, all three of them for $5, with the embroidery done for you. And this is 5 for this grouping as well. As a reseller, I like to get them cheaper, but I think there's money in those. The vases are Royal Copley, and the item on the right, um, apparently somebody's taking a break. All right, there's the Afghan, or an Afghan. We're going to take a look. Definitely very 70s colors, but really kind of pleasing, too. Yeah, it's a little different design. Okay. Five a piece. Okay. okay, thank you. Yeah, they're a little on the small side. Five seems like a fine price, though. A different kind? You don't see this. Well, the crocheting is a different pattern than we're used to. <laughs> we can dub it in. 
1890s chest of drawers that are missing its mirror, but you could take the harp off. Okay, no snags. I don't, well, I mean... Looks good to me. One of those old 60s record holders when you were going to a party. The planters are neat and old and heavy, which is why I'll probably leave them. This was by Red Winger Robinson Ramsbottom. They both did similar lines. I think this was RRP, but it's got a big crack. But these folks also always get a bunch of interesting, fun vintage stuff. Now let's see if this is in a little better shape of Samsonite here. 20, yeah, see, they really only go for about 10 each, mostly now, with a few exceptions. I like this painted brass from India. That's not a bad price, 250 Victorian silver plate piece. That's very fancy. $20, I mean, that really is a great price for it. It was made as a basket. That's why it has the detail in the bottom. So it did not have a liner, I don't believe. I think it just came like this. This is Miller & Company treble plate. So that puts it back to the 1880s, which is what they show there. This person who had it was born in 1880, apparently. They weren't born with this, but somebody got that croquet set. This is a little large for me to take, and it looks like some of the mallets are not in very good condition. I do like the train case, though. Looks like it has a little bit of costume jewelry in it. Maybe we can take a look at that. Oh, I don't blame you. I know, they're too handy to take around. And you do have a lot of little stuff. The lion is $10. Well, that's kind of fun. Yeah, that might be all right. Yes, definitely Japanese. Hold it up. Yeah, see right there, W-N-G. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's Ruby, and that was a little more expensive when new. $10 is for the pair or a piece? Yeah. It's TV Crockett mug in these parts would probably still sell from the 50s. I think he got these a few Sen and Cheerios box tops or something. That's definitely Japanese. You can tell because the paint sort of stops. Then let's see what the Fenton basket is. It's a nice lavender trim. 25 well, I don't know. I like the color, but it's more than I want to start at. What are these blue unicorns? Blue? What is the... the code on the box? Yeah, but let's see what the code is. It's a... made in Taiwan, so they probably are the same era as the Leo Ward bluebirds. The unicorns were definitely an 80s thing. Nice color for a Fenton hobnail. I mean, the compotes are not uncommon, but they're interesting enough. Oh, yes, the bud vases. The head vases. Yeah, this is an American company out of Ohio. And a little bit of gold wear, but the price is great. Yeah. Yeah, there is. They've got planners and stuff. They've got a pretty good selection every year. I oftentimes start here because they have some better stuff at the very beginning, but yesterday i had to go the other direction forty dollars and 45 on the mccoy that's more than i'm willing to pay this old flying wild turkey a bumper of good liquor will end a contest quicker than justice judge or vicar let us have wine and women with mirth and laughter sermons and soda water the day after this is right before prohibition this is 1910s and they are trying to make a point and it may have even been distributed in some connection with wild turkey, but I think it was just really a reference to whiskey drinking. So I think for $5, I'm going to have to have that because I think somebody who's into prohibition collectibles will understand the interest in this piece. Swanky Swig for $4. One of the cuter ones. This would probably sell. We'll put it in the bundle. Let's see what's over here. We've got one pen, but it's got a chip. We have one piece of blue heaven under here. It's only $3, but it does have some scratches. This is one of Royal China's better modernist patterns. Now this is probably Polish pottery and it's probably a really great deal. Nope, made in China. It's just made to look like it. And I see the difference. Look how blurry this is. This is being done with a stamp glaze rather than the hand painting of the polish so that's why it's five dollars lots of dinnerware lots of glass these big 
bowls here. I bet this is Stangletown in country, this spatterware effect. We see it in this part of the country, and it's actually ceramic, and there is the stangle mark on it. But it looks a lot like both spatterware, but also like enamelware. And so people like to mix and match. This was popular in the late 70s. $15 on the big bowl is actually a really good price, although selling it online with shipping. Yeah, I see a few road signs that are real and a bunch of reproductions and a lot of new stuff. There is some Roseville over there, so we'll go take a look at that. Gray 3, yeah, that looks like a legit road sign of some sort, and then somebody isn't open yet. Well, every year I seem to spend about $40 with those gals. They have Buster's Antiques in Hopkinsville, and I really need to get in there and see that place. These folks usually have newer stuff, but I see some Roseville, and Zeno spotted it too, and this piece of Bischoff glass from West Virginia. The black fenton is interesting to people because you don't see black as much. several pieces of Roseville, including the early 1900s tulip piece, but this modernist piece is something we want to take a look at just to learn something. 1989 Windward Pottery. I don't know that anybody would know that, but it's attractive. It's a pleasant looking piece. Yeah. That was when production pottery and studio pottery were trying to mirror each other. So I finally did replace the ball on the lightning rod and sold it, but I, it is sometimes good to have one of these aside. It's got a little chip, but the fact that it's complete and the fact that it has the stars makes it a little more interesting in the blue Delphite color, 1890s. So they definitely have more old stuff than they have in the past in this particular booth. And that's good to see because we haven't been finding as much. That looks like it's homemade. Nope. Oh, yeah, it is. But it came from. Ah. Yep, that's Roseville, too. I always like the double candle uh, holders. They're just or bud bases. Now, this guy had some of this at Greenville, the big flea market. This is a cool blackberry brandy bottle. I think you could make money on this for sure. It's only $25, and it's a big tavern size for show. Yeah, they have just the normal phrasing, but they're actually in good shape. Royal Copley, they made a whole lot of those, but people like them still. I mean, the Ivy's popular pattern. This is a nice McCoy, but it's got to skip it. It's a bad spot. West German, yes. 1970s. Very flower powered. They weren't as careful as the Italians with the glaze, but it does have the look. Well, it wasn't the top of the market when it was new. Neither was McCoy, but people love that now. Shiny glaze is real even, as you can tell. These are and sort of fakely obscured details. These are newer. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Shawnee frog relaxing in the whatever that is. It's like a hot tub plant for frogs. Oh it's a lotus. It's a lotus, yes. <laughs> he, he seems to be soaking under it. They're not. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Easy. Why would they be tied together? No. No. They're recent. This is Czech Amphora from about 1930. Indian head base. Made in Japan, 1930s. But we asked for our first price and it was astronomical. So I think we're done here. Now, when you have a $20 planter and your price is 65 that tells me that you're not really here to sell. That's why I said I was going to take one piece. I do this a lot of times when they don't have prices on things. You take one piece that you definitely know and have sold recently and ask them the price and then you can kind of judge the rest of their pricing from that and his was well he's going to take it home pricing well the kids all got something a fishing pole a bait can an oiler a doll i was never that small well no no you would have <laughs> bent that in half as an infant i'm sure but it is your era like the croquet set, 45 isn't bad. This one at least is in reasonable condition all the way through. Stangle pieces for eight fifty and ten dollars. I mean, their prices are really very reasonable, and it's cute the way they have it all displayed. Does that go with that? Oh no, that's a glass bottom. No, that would have had a ceramic piece. This is 1930s, and that is 1960s. If you have your wagon, you can take home anything that you can find. We are definitely in Amish country here. We're going to try to be respectful and not show them and we're going to look at the cool stuff that they have and there's other sellers here as well buggy seat for 50 dollars that is old enough mm. yeah i know it's too big but i like it oh yeah they get broken pretty easily ten dollars it's cute you can take one panel and just mount it as a decoration on a wall a lot of people do that now i don't think that comports with current child safety regulations this table is actually a nice sort of rectilinear style from the late 70s. I like the parquetry just fine. And, you know, 
it's actually in good shape. It's clean, late 70s, early 80s. And for that era, this was a lot less overdone and ostentatious. And you see the brass fittings. Brass fittings are coming back in in furniture. So yeah, this could end up in a house, 250. I can tell from the shape, this one is either Indiana glass or Blanco. I think this is Indiana. Sure. Yep, I'm positive. Yep, it's got the right ring. It's definitely Indiana. Blanco's had a little different lobe. Five dollars is pretty good, actually. I don't see anything wrong with it. I mean, it is big and heavy, but it's a good color. Ace Perfection Dog Ration. Four dollars each. It's a bigger mix of people selling here than last year. It's interesting. We saw a little less on the western part of the excursion, and we're seeing a little more already on this section. More spice of life. There's a lot of it around, but it is good quality. Oh, these are Bartlett and Collins. Yes. It'd be great to have the whole set. These actually are selling now. They're very big, but and they're that screen print, but this is what they were doing in the mid-70s, early to mid. They're not in bad shape. Nope, Sagittarius and Libra. I'm going to take all three for 12. I think they're cool. Well, I got to give Zeno credit. Those are pretty valuable. He called that right. They're worth about 35 to 40 a piece. Along the roadside, we see lots of fun things. This is the country barn and the roadside farm market. And this is in Fairview, Kentucky, along Highway 6880. It's a beautiful place in a rather significant town because Jefferson Davis was born here. And that is why there is a monument almost the size of the Washington Monument in the middle of nowhere in Kentucky. Interestingly enough, Abraham Lincoln was born about an hour and a half away in the same state. We're going to get some sort of little nosh to take on the road here and perhaps a bottle of water. Lovely produce, this area produces a lot. There's also a farm auction right near here that's going on now. And then the nursery and garden center and seed center is beyond. Muscadine grape cider, spiced apple cider. They've got all sorts of fun stuff, a lot made here in Kentucky. Kentucky is a very agricultural state. Amish cobbler, there are a lot of Amish in this area particularly. The Amish are smart. They tend to settle in places that have not had coal strip mining and they look for very pure water. And so if you're in an area where the Amish are moving, like they are here, that is a good sign that your area is pretty healthy ecologically. Well, Tina's Consignments is on the sale map this year, and they say they're having a big antique discount of 50% on stuff, so let's go in and see what this place looks like. Right away, I see a lot of painted stuff and a lot of foofy stuff that looks cute for interiors. I don't see antiques. They... wait a second. One Caronan purse. All right, well, this one's a little different. It doesn't have the penny on top, and it's not for a specific place. It's just the painting of the scene. Cute piece. I don't see a price. I see a few discounts, I don't see antiques, and I don't see 50% off anything at all. Well, that was disappointing. But that's okay, because just around the corner and down the block is Todd's Cafe. It hasn't been opened in a long time, but there's always a sale here every year, and I have found some good things here. They put the furniture overflow and the prints and things at the cafe in this part, and then there's a house with a bunch of stuff and more dealers around the corner, so this is a fun place to stop. Oh my, um, yes, I guess they'll get clean. C. Don Enser was a Louisville artist who did a large series of prints based on still lifes of vintage things and things you would find in farmsteads in Kentucky. He did this back in the 1970s. Grand Staff is another one known in this area for this, and these can sell for as much as 75 to 100. And here is the house. This is where last year I found a great Saltarini patio table for 40 bucks, and I love these 1930s chrome pieces with the cherry bakelite handles. I really wish the handle wasn't broken on the cocktail shaker because that's the best piece. These percolators with the red handles, they will sell if they have the cord, so let's take a look. And mm, a little water, a little condensation, no cord, darn. You could probably find one at a thrift store, but I just don't have time to go looking for that, so it'll have to stay. Too bad. The cream and green enamel wear definitely outsells the red and white these days. Let's see what else they have down here. You never know with this place. I think they just store up stuff all year long and then have this sale every year. These are cool. They are not old enough for me to buy, though. Let's see what we have down this aisle. Oh yes, an old gas iron. Yeah, that's a little gas container and hookup in the back there. 1920s, back when people didn't all have the electricity yet. Even in the early 70s, Japan was still making inexplicable strange souvenir items that were cheap. This 
woman is in a tub and it's an ash tree? I don't get that at all. Oh, I remember these 1970s art projects. We had to do this in school. We had to find a bottle, put a bunch of masking tape all over it, and then stain it to make it look old. I'm not sure what the purpose was, but it was fun. These people do get a lot of old and vintage things. I mean, there's a lot of those daisy glasses mm -hmm, right out of the 70s in the amber color. They sell better in the blue, but this does go. And then a bin of car parts, including some cool old 1930s chrome lamps. A whole bunch of tins, but, you know, they're all missing lids. These are 60s and 70s era. This stuff's pretty common, not worth a lot. And then there's the bubbla, as they call it in New England. I believe in Wisconsin they call it a bubbler as well. Everyone else calls them drinking fountains. Funnily enough, this is a bucket list item. I've always wanted to have one of these to sell, but it's a little too big for me to take today. Of all the china patterns, these are some of the hardest to sell, these Japanese with the floral edges. But the Liberty Blue, well, this sells because people recognize it from the 70s when you could get this in the grocery stores as a premium and then build a set for yourself. So these do sell. Ah, yes, the very happy bright yellow McCoy little jug for a washstand pitcher and bowl set. These were very common in the 1970s because it was a nostalgia throwback to earlier washstand pitchers and bowls, but now that they're out of style, it's kind of hard to sell. On the other hand, Zeno's right about this Royal Hager piece for only $2. Some nice looking trunks. You know, this year it seems like the better stuff they have is big and we're driving a little car. So our next stop is the Country Breeze Market Sale. They have a bunch of dealers out front here every year. Now last year it was mostly new stuff, but I see a bunch of different tents this year. And so we're going to take a look around and see if we can find anything vintage that we can delight our collectors with or sell for a profit. When a lot of people see tools, they turn away, but I look for things like old flashlights because they sell really well. Only $5 for that. However, this is one that clamps on top of a giant Duracell battery, and I think the battery might be more expensive than people would be willing to pay to get this thing to run again. It is tempting, though. It's a good look for $5, and flashlight collectors like these old varieties that show the progression of the form. And even if you don't know the category well, you can always look for hard hats with logos. That one doesn't have one. You can look for miners' lamps, woodworking planes. There are certain things that tool collectors just love. We haven't been in the market before. We've always just shopped outside. We'll see if there's anything for sale inside, besides the usual groceries. But I do see some neat pedal cars and some dolls and some things that have some age up there and a plow. It might be a newer building, but they're certainly giving it a little bit of character. I like the croc, the stoplight, the old butcher scale. Looks like it could be from around here. Golden Sun Feeds, and a good old-time gas pump that contains lead. Oh, and I bet it does. But let's go see what their new dealers have. I see some quilts and appliques here. These all appear to be newer, though. I like the old hand pump. Those always sell for me if I can find them at a good price. The grinder is interesting for a kitchen collector, but not cheap enough. Another buggy bench. Mostly seem to have the right prices on the razors in the collection there, and besides which, I just got a big razor collection in Florida. The Elson readers that you see here are the books my mother had in school. We grew up with those. Little cap gun there, and some Star X openers, and usual fun little metal things, but nothing at a price I can afford. I'm beginning to remember why I don't usually spend a lot of time in this field. I mean, this is a neat piece. It's got that great metalwork from the 50s. The ashtray's in good condition, but it's $75. And I have to say, everything here is priced full retail and then some. Lucky Joe Bank for $40. We can't get that for those. Only in the 70s could MASH have been such a hit on TV. It was very adult-oriented, and there really isn't a lot of merchandise, so this liquor dispenser is unusual few cameras here. I like twin lens even if they're the cheap kind. I always look at those because they sell better and they have a certain look to them. Miner's lunch pails with these multi-segments are something we see a little bit more in this area because of the history of the area. And somebody has painted the base to this, but these double wash stands are useful at parties nowadays because they hold ice and lots of beverages, so they are popular again. Thank goodness they have porta potties along this route. 
This obscure place near South Union, Kentucky is about the midpoint of this sale, and these dealers do really well here. People come to them first because they have a lot of antique and vintage stuff, and because their prices are pretty reasonable. Lots of old farm wheels, lots of old carts, lots of bases for workbenches. It's definitely a place repurposers can find a lot of stuff, and you can see a lot of people gravitate towards this place. And a very nice fellow who's a viewer of mine has this end of it, and I want to go see what he's got. Cool to look at, but a lot of these old heaters have asbestos in them, so be very careful if you're actually going to use them. He's pretty good about his pricing, and he does bundles, so this started at $30, the atomic clock, but I have a feeling it might be had for less. I see shuttles and a whole bag of Bakelite. 45 pieces for $60 is a pretty good price for Bakelite-handled utensils. Ah, the 70s. Privacy started to be more of an issue, and, well, this definitely gets the point across. This person has barbed wire fencing and is not really at home to visitors. Cute piece, though. He's got quite a bit of ceramic here, including a lot of these little jugs that are local potteries from the 1930s. This is a niloic piece here with the variegated glaze. You see it in white right next to it. That was a popular piece for them of their highwood line. This is Metlocks. That's a divided relish. Interesting shape from the 1960s, one of the homestead lines with the house on it there. And then this I've always liked. It's probably the best thing they ever made. Brock of California did this farmstead pattern around 1960 that's popular with some collectors. These look like coal pottery out of the Carolinas. People mistake these for Francoma, but the glazing is different. It's not as um, variegated. It's more speckled and mottled throughout the glaze, as you can see there. And these little Shawnee fruit cluster shakers, these are only $3. That's a pretty good price. I think we should be able to get about 8 for those, so we'll get those. I like the style of this 60s era ashtray, and it looks like good quality ceramic, heavy porcelain, and that is because it's hyaline. You will often see these cork bottoms with the hyaline stamp. They were made in the Carolinas. It's really good quality. The designs are very modernist, and it's something that seems a little obscure outside of the southeast, but definitely worth collecting if you find it. And I just did. Andy Gibbs said, what am I supposed to write? And they said, words and music. So he did. <laughs> It's fun at highway sales, though. You get to see all sorts of different things. Lots of records here. These seem like mostly kitty stuff. A brand new day. That seems to be a religious-based one. Those do not sell well, unfortunately. Very splashy big flowers on linens in 70s colors are definitely popular now. I'm just looking to see if this might be a Vera piece. It's only $5. Seems like a great piece of fabric for the price somebody could reuse it, if not as a curtain, maybe as something for upholstery. And it looks like there's a few of them there, but no Vera tag on them. I'm starting to have viewers noticing copper, and while this is more of a copper wash from the 60s, this canister set for only $20 seems like a really good deal. A little bit worn on top, though. That thin copper coating did not always last well, so you have to look at condition on those. Here's a funky old Tupperware set. It is the picnic set, similar to the Ingrid Ball set around the same time in the 70s, but this one seals up into sort of a biscuit-shaped little package when you carry it around, and there is our Tupperware label. Any decent-looking old-school fireman's helmet in good condition will sell for, gosh, 40 or $50 typically, so I always look at these, but this one's pretty rough, and it is missing its strap. Loving the Flower Power Girls bicycle seat. If you were restoring an old bike, you would need that for $25. A lot of people stuck things on phones back in the day, and usually I want to peel them off, but this one I would leave because it has to do with the bank where that phone came from originally, and that makes it a local interest thing. Any decent paint by number will sell for $20 or $30 now. They have one in almost every color. These were done by Whirlpool, those ashtrays, to show you the different finishes available on the appliances back then, and yes, they tended to chip like the appliances, so finding them in good shape makes them of value to collectors. What other cute things are there here? Nice old oak wall phone. Ooh, very nice pedestal and jardiniere. They don't seem to be a match, but they're both of the same era. Likely to be Weller or Roseville or Owens. There's a slim chance of McCoy, but I think that these are Roseville or Weller pieces. Looking at the patterns here, I think that's Roseville's Rosane. The biggest surprise isn't that there's a worm in this apple, it's that there was string in this apple, that's why there's a hole in the bottom. This is a 
wall hanging string holder, you'd put the ball of string behind it and then pull out pieces to tie off your packages. And then sold in Florida, but made in Japan is this little souvenir piece. This is really cool for a couple of reasons. I have a friend who is a former race car driver and he likes these trophies, so I always look at them now. But this one's unusual because this is the Southern Kentucky Ladies Championship race in 1959. There were not a lot of women in stock car racing in 1959, so that was actually a pretty progressive idea. And it makes sense that it would be in Kentucky because a lot of the stock car racing started with the moonshiners in the 40s. My friend who has his face is showing me the resin grapes here. It's a shame that they need to be put back together again because that's a really great bunch. And I like the bowl that they're in too. It looks like a big banana frond, but it's made out of wood. So it's pretty neat. I can see why he has $65 on that. It's a neat looking package there. And two for one on the resin grapes. There's a big stretch of people who set up alongside the road in Glasgow in this big parking lot. Yes, we're in Glasgow, not to be mistaken with Scotland. Soon we'll be in Edmonton. We go all over on this trip, all over the world in 150 miles. We do a drive-by of this one because there's not usually too much in terms of antiques and vintage here, and we didn't see much today, so we're going to move along. After a few years of doing these highway sales, you start to get a feel for where the old stuff is and where the baby stuff and the pallet sales and the hog wild barbecue are. I came to this field last year and I bought some stuff, but I got here a lot later and there's more this year. And so maybe we'll see something interesting. I already like this upholstery, even though it's not the original, the peacock on this settee. I bet these have been resprung. And that means at $50 and $25, they could really be worth redoing. I mean, those are just great prices. Imperial glass for 18. Is that Imperial? No, I think that's Indiana. Uranium glass furniture coasters for $2 each. I suppose those might be worth getting because somebody will use them as votive candle holders and like that they go under the black light. The Westmoreland Old Quilt pedestal candy dish is only $3, so for a collector of milk glass, that'd be a great deal. And the salt and hot play right out of the 1970s so you could serve a buffet and keep everything warm. They actually worked pretty well, $5. This guy's got some cool old stuff. Yeah. I remember you. Pocket yeah, tins with some bottles. A little bit of enamel wear. Shawnee corn set, that's nice. And the Viking piece in amber. Which was any other color, although their amber is not a bad color. It's a nice honey amber. Six dollars, that's about the right price. 1974 and 75 when they were one of the best teams, attendance-wise, in the ABA. Early 80s, I think you could send off soup labels to Campbell's and get these. It doesn't look like it's in good shape. Conestoga Way, and you see a lot of these here. I wish I could find one that was in a little better condition. This one, this one could probably clean. He's definitely selling Oregon. Big old McCoy cookie jar there. We're getting into the Kentucky Karst country, so you notice the undulating hills and then sinkholes that fill with water. It's a lot like Florida here. 1930s butter dish and a couple of swanky swigs. We'll see what they have on those. I see cheap prices on most things, so these might be too. 40th anniversary. It's a beautiful red new Martinsville Janus pattern tray done when this had turned into Viking glass in their ruby color around 1950. It's only five dollars, but you got to find someone who's going to have a 40th anniversary and then it's only good once. This little opalescent cherry pattern, basic carnival glass bowl, but it's losing some of the iridescence, so we're going to leave that. These folks did have things to buy last year and I got here really late when they were starting to cover up, so this year I'm going to get to see the whole thing slicing knife. I knew someone who used those to cut padding for upholstery. These are Depression Era, only four dollars. Very inexpensive. These are kind of cute. These frosted for a dollar a piece, but I don't see a complete set. Twelve dollars on the set of Libby Gold Leaf. Tall Tumblers, 1960 vintage. These are almost a zombie size for iced tea. Douglas MacArthur, and it looks like he comes in a couple of different colors. This is Vernon Kilns from the Second World War era. Looks like they have several of these, $5 each. They used to go for about 15 I think they're down to about 10 now. French glass pink from the 70s, that's why it's a little more of a peachy color. Pink Depression cookie jar. 
their prices are suddenly right. Lots of these violin bottles given out by florists, they want $10 a piece. Someone just rolled up in a pretty hot, looks like a Ford turned into a Roadster in a great grape color. Now to me, a Papasan chair, if you could get the padding in it, would be a very fun, comfortable 1970s thing to have in a house. They were very common growing up in Navy towns because a lot of these were made in the Philippines and imported to the U.S. $15. Great price to start with, but then you have to make a pad. Daisy and Dot by Marcrest. That's a big heavy thing to ship though. Yes, I like that I'm sticking to little stuff right now. If I'm not finding great things, then I want to find cheap things and keep them small so that they have good profit potential per item. If somebody had a lot of fun with an old Model A Ford, named Mary Bell. Zeno is consulting the map and we're going to go in here. It says it's a storage locker, but it says it has junk and collectibles and other stuff. They clearly have a lovely buggy for sale and some great flowers, but we will take a look at these things and see if there's anything for us. Okay, I approve of the attempt of the 80s with the 50s table. Well, an old torch. You sell 15's pretty good. It is brass. Brass is coming back. License plates might be worth buying. A lot of the tools are priced about right for what they are. A barber chair, I guess, or a shampoo chair. Good style, good color, but it's got some splits. It's too bad because actually these are pretty comfortable and you could have these at a bar as a good mid-century touch nowadays in a house. Not for sale. Anyone caught here at night will be found here in the morning. That seems ominous. Well, I hope I'm not getting into something I shouldn't, but I think I'm not. I think I'm still in the places. Yes, I see price tags over here. so. We've got a bunch of car parts. I just don't see the kind of tools that I sell. I sell old washboards. Boy, nowadays with the price of old radios, I could almost take the time to clean this up for just a little bit less, but it does have a crack there. Hard to find them in good shape anymore. I mean, they are 70 years old, some of these. That's the one my parents had in 1980. They had to get it at the hardware store in Silverdale, Washington, because there weren't any big stores at the time. Ooh, this is worth about 30 bucks. I'm going to grab this. Well, that was fortunate. I found the four-wheel drive emblem, and it's from an old Jeep, 1960s vintage, I'd say. And $5 is perfectly fine because anybody who is into four-wheel driving of any sort is going to have some sort of enthusiasm for this. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.